Hey there, how y'all doing? It's Profile here. And uh, since a lot of people like the last bike, I guess, how-to I did on the free coaster I have, which is the Eclat Blind, I figured, and while I said if uh, a lot of people like it, I will make another how-to on the BMX. This is more of a informal, if you want to call it that. But this one, I'm going to show you how and the correct way, because I've seen a lot of videos on uh, how to chew rims and, and whatnot. And there is quite a bit. But a lot of them forget a lot of things. Like I saw one recently from a big company and uh, they trued the rim, but it just looks so, so bad. So I figured I might as well work on mine because I did lace my hubs recently. And um, the best tip I actually got from a friend, because I said all these are just stuff I've picked up over the years and uh, stuff that I already know and I just smashed them all together. But the tip that I've gotten from a friend was uh, every time you lace a reel, and the best thing to do is to ride it, ride it for about a week or two. That way your spokes can stretch. And uh, it's already been about a week, a little more than a week since I had this laced up. So it's time for me to chew my rim. And the best, well, not the best, the reason why I'm rechewing is because after your spokes are stretched, when you rechew your rim, the chances of you having to rechew it again are really, really slim. So as you can see, my rim's not that bad, but it's just that time. It's actually almost perfect i do have like a little it's off center but i'll show you how to fix that this room's actually really really perfect so far so let me go ahead and get to that real quick and take this off all right now the first first thing you should do before even taking off your wheels is uh the sidewalls here they're, they're not that dirty because i just wiped it down but i am going to put on a stand so you want to actually clean these off clean your rims off because well if you do have sand on it when you're using on the stand you might scrape your wheel or your rim and uh also, we want to try to get this as perfect as we can as true. So having a, I guess, sand grit, if you ride a lot, you run through soda, you know, whatever is on the park floor, that will mess up when you're chewing it because the arms will get stuck and lift and they will rub and you might think your rim's not like centered, but it's actually, uh, it's just dirt. So I'm going to go wipe these off again and then I'm going to take off my wheel, put on a stand. All right, before anything else, you want to make sure you have your work area ready. As you can see, I do. I have my chewing stand. This is actually a cheap chewing stand I got off Amazon. It helps out. It does what it needs to do. And um, I believe I got it a little under $100. I don't remember exactly how much it is, but it does its job. And then you want your uh, whatever you're using to remove your wheel. Um, we're not going to actually use the actual tool. This is the shadow tool with a Mega Man sticker because I like Mega Man. But I am going to eat the 17 that's on it. And uh, of course, you can eat whatever you're going to use for a spoke wrench. I got this off a friend. Um, really dope he's helped out he's helped out a very very a lot i'll build a lot of the dudes wheels over here so you get to have your 17 your spoke tool and your stand now before you even put on the stand make sure you take off the tire off the the rim and that's just that's just because it's if you're going to do the job make sure you do it right you know the first time and this is as calling it's like as lacing it or building the rim or chewing your rim so don't leave your tire on. Go ahead and take it off. It just makes it 10 times easier. That way when you chew it, you know, it's done right. All right, now that I have it on the stand, the one thing you want to do is you want to make sure that the arms from the stand hit about, I guess this would be one fourth of the rim. And the reason why you're doing that is because this is actually where the rim lining is. Now, even though it shows the rim right here, you can have a dent from your rim and imperfection from your rim. And uh, this is actually the most, I guess, straight part of the rim itself is near the edge. Also, that's where the walls of the rim are, of course. Now, let me turn this around so you can see. What you want to do is you want to turn it very, very, very slowly where it starts to hit. Actually, I was on the part needs to hit. Can you hear that? So that's where I need a true. Now, also you want to be really, really delicate when you do this. Okay, now when you chew a rim on a stand, you don't want to go crazy and just start turning stuff. Like I said, I always do everything about one-fourth of a turn. A lot of people do half a turn. I only do half a turn when it's real dramatic. So let me go back to where it is. Find where it's hitting.
Okay. It's heating from here, this spoke, to that spoke. So, what a lot of people suggest is do it as a tug of war state. Now, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to loosen the side where it's hitting first. Like I said, I'm only going to do it one fourth a turn. Or you can just count one, well, one second, or just one. So, since these are 15s, loosen one, one, one. And you can do it where it's hitting, okay? Now, you can see that it actually fixed it. So then you're going to bring the arms to the stand a little closer. Where it hits and it hit right here this actually hit on the weld now if you do if it hits on the weld where it's at this is an imperfection sometimes it's not going to be perfect no matter what because that's just the weld intruding well pre-truding so we're going to still try to get rid of that so it's hitting from here to here so again you're just going to loosen it Remember, one second. Get that 15 on though. One. One. Super simple. And then again, you just get a repeat. Till it hits again. Now, I did loosen these sides already. So now what you want to do is you want to go to the other side. And you are going to tighten it. Again, one second. One, one. Now see, it's gone. Super, super, super simple. And again, just repeat that step. Now, so your rim will never, ever be 100% true. I don't care what shop's gonna say it, what company's gonna say it, it will never be 100% true. So, Let's see, let me finish this off. Like I said, remember, loosen one side, one, one, and spin it. One, one. You want to do this gradually. You don't want to overturn it. As you can see, now it's true. And I said my rim wasn't that bad, or even bad to begin with, but it is time for me to do it anyways, because it has been the, the week or two that I've done it. Now, again, I'm going to show you how to remove the hop of the rim. All right, now after your rim is true to a point where it's not hitting both sides, what you want to do is you now you get to focus on the hop of the rim. And that's your uh, actual, I guess, radius true. Now... What you want to do is you want to spin the rim, and then, as like I said, my stand has this little knob here. And I'm going to turn it up to where it's hitting the very edge of the rim. And now we're going to look for imperfections in the hop. Like I said, it, once you true rim, your rim's going to have, like, well, it's not going to be totally radius. So now we want to focus to make sure this spins in an actual circle, not where it's coming up and down. Now, this is where a lot of companies don't show you what they're talking about or they won't tell you how to do it because this is where they make their money um usually when they find the as a hop they'll tell you that either your rim's bad or your spokes are bad but in most cases like say for mine my spokes were actually a little longer but they weren't made for this hub so when you lace the wrong spokes to a rim that's the main majority why you get hops unless you like recase something ridiculous but then if you case you're gonna actually you're gonna bend your rims and you'll notice that right away but most hops come from spokes that aren't made for your hub so now i'm gonna get to how to fix that all right so i already raised it you see i raised the arm already now as you heard that little grinding noise that's because i actually have a hop there now again your will will never ever be 100 percent true like i said if anybody says that don't listen to them but you can get it as close as possible but it will never ever be 100 percent true so now you're going to spin your rim and you'll find where it hits see it hit right here that's actually quite a bit so now you're going to find where it starts so since it started on this spoke right here i'm going to count my way down and the reason why i count my way down is that way i know 
exactly how long how long it is where it hits. So I'm going to count down 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Now see how it isn't hitting, but go back and it hits. So that's 15. So pretty much my wheel is going up and down. And now, like I said, everything you do, you want to do it gradually. And it's about maybe one fourth of a turn. Like I said, what I do is I count literally one and I count down. So I'm going to count down until it hits. All right. Now to remove the hop, what you can do is, like I said, I have 16 where it goes down. That's where I counted. Each one is getting one equal turn. Now when you turn it, you're going to push the wheel up by tension. And then again, you're going to find out where the rim isn't, I guess it's popping up, and you're going to loosen those. But since I'm trying to pull it up, I'm going to do 16 equal turns. Like I said, I count them. So it's just one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, and 16. Now if you want to do you can actually do 17 just to, but you don't really need to. Now I'm going to spin the wheel to see if I have any more hops in the rim. That way I can fix it real quick. So as you can see I already hit one. So one, two, three. Four, five. So exact same way like I did before. One equal turn. So one, two, three, four, five. Give it six. Since I counted wrong, so six. Now again, spin it again. Now see it's hitting again right there. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. And like I said, this will never be 100% true, but you want to do the best you can to almost get it there. But it will never be 100% true. So keep spinning it until it hits. Count again. One, two, three, four. Now it's four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I'm going to do nine now. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine all right now this is another part of trying to get the radius true like i said i'm trying to do it with my one hand now if you look where the arm is let me try to get a gap between it right there as you can see it goes up a little and it goes down now of course where it's going down that's where it's hitting but also if you look real closely how it's down but then it goes up it's about right there now with that, what you want to do is you want to do the exact same thing. So it would be about right here. So what you want to do is you want to count to where the rim goes back down. So it would be like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Now it went back down. Now with those seven spokes, you're actually, you're actually going to unloosen. You're not going to tie it and you're going to unloosen it one equal turn. Like I said, one equal turn. Then I'm going to unloosen it now. Because now the rim is too high up, so you want to bring the tension down. So I'm loosening the tension, we'll bring the rim down a little. So, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. All right, now that you've already got your your rim trued from your spokes hitting left and right and you took out the hop as best as you can almost perfect 
Now what you want to do is you want to pop your spokes. Now what a lot of people do is they'll grab two individual spokes from both sides and they'll clamp them. Now this actually doesn't really do anything but make your spokes pop when you put them on. It doesn't stretch them. So the best way I've figured out how to do it is just spin your rim a little. Now don't go sticking your hand in. That's just dumb. You want to go and swipe it slowly and that will remove the popping onto the spokes. So just go. You hear the pop? And then do it to the other side. Don't worry about that. That was just me moving it. All right, now that they got the pop out, you want to go back and try to retrue it again. Because since you've moved these spokes up and down, your rim actually comes off, comes off centered a little. So now you're going to go back and you're going to do the whole thing again, retruing it. All right, now that I actually true the sides, I worked on the hump, I took out the popping from the spokes, and then I retrued it again. It's almost done, but you're not quite Like I said, this is almost perfect. It says it's never going to be 100%. The only reason why it's moving is because of the rim strip. But it's almost perfect. Now, after this, what you want to do is you want to go and tighten every spoke one equal turn. Let me go to the nipples real quick. One equal turn. So let me show you how real quick. And this is that way, well, I'm doing this. That way I don't have to go back and then relace my rims. Well, not relacing. I have to go back and retrue them. Because now, after it's been already set centered, I'm going to give one equal turn to each nipple. That way your rim stays tight. I said, so you have some super tight spokes. That way you're doing a 360 or 180 or something. Your rim doesn't knock off center. So, let me go to that now. Alright, now to get these equally tensioned every spoke, which is a 36 spoke rim, what you want to do is you want to have these one equal turn, all right? So this one is actually what I do is a half turn. I don't just go one fourth a turn. I'm going to do a half turn. That way they get enough tension on them and you're not spending one second doing them. So get your tool, line it up. Now even though the spokes could be like this, you're still going to go a half turn, each one. So just start it off. So one, remember half turns. You want each of them to be a half turn. All right, now that I have each one of these equally tensioned, like I said, I did start from the valve hole. Always start from your valve hole. That's like your guideline. And each one of these got one equal half turn all the way through. Now, after you tighten your spokes, each one equally, you want to go back and you want to tree, well, retrue the sides of it. Because since you are tightening it again, sometimes uh, it might get out of true, but it's not dramatic. You're just retighten each spoke. And uh, go back after that and retrue your rim. And uh, we're almost done, but there's also one more thing that a lot of people don't, well, a lot of shops don't tell you, and a lot of people don't tell you how. Now, you can lace your rims, you can chew your rims, and they can be so perfect where they're almost, almost 100%, but like I said, not 100%. But the one thing that people don't tell you is, is this, you can actually knock your rim off center. Now, what I mean by off center is like, for example, say you're working on the back rim, and you just laced it up with some old spokes and, uh, you know, you're all happy and you throw it on your bike, but then after you put it on, your rim tends to, well, it starts to hit your uh, your rear end where I guess the, the tire mounts on, it starts hitting the frame, and then you try to fix it, but no matter what, it just will never stay centered in the middle. Now, the reason for that is because, again, your rim is not centered. Now, the only time, not the only time, the time that it usually happens is if you use spokes that aren't the same size, that's why I say recommend, oh, well, I recommend you get new spokes every time you lace a hub. That's just my rule of thumb. But the way to get rid of that is the exact same way like you would to tighten your spokes. But instead, I'm just going to show you real quick because my rim is actually centered now. You're going to go from the valve hole and then all the spokes on the side where it's not centered. Like say, for example, if my tire is hitting on this side would be the right side of it. What you want to do is you want to go to each spoke and you want to unloosen these one half turn. So from the valve hole all the way around, one equal half turn. And what that will do is that will let your rim get some kind of play. These spokes will get one equal turn. So you're going to loosen one side where it hits and you get tied to one side where it hits. And now when you do that, your rim is going to shift to the side where it needs to be centered. But the only way to really find that out, because you can use a stand, but 
sometimes the stands aren't actually centered as you think. So the only way you can really find that out is to actually throw your wheel on your frame and see if it actually, like for example, if it's on the fork, which is the front rim, I'll throw it on to make sure it's centered in the middle. And if it's a back rim, the exact same thing, all right? Now, I already laced it. Well, I laced it myself ball back, but I showed you guys how to true it. Now I'm gonna show you how close to 100%, but it's never gonna be 100%. But this is pretty much done, all right? As you can see, perfectly true. Let me go down. This is where it matters. Look at that. Bam, isn't that pretty? Now, with the hops now. Look at that. Almost zero hops. It does have a slight, slight unnoticeable hop. That's just because I know because I trued it. But this is almost 100%. But like I said, you will never, ever find a wheel rim that is 100%. I don't care what shop you are, that will never, ever happen. So, I'm already done here. Now again, I hope you all enjoy this video. Leave a like down below if you like the video. Dislike if you dislike the video. Subscribe if you're not subscribed. And of course, I'll see you guys next time.